America Crystal Knocked 2024. Let me explain. This one's going to take some explaining. Uh, for many years, I have been preaching that there would be a second Holocaust here in America. And uh, I've been warning about this for a very long time because of uh, radical Roman Catholicism, which was the uh, religious system behind the Nazi movement. You can see all the pictures and everything else. Hitler, you know, meeting with Catholic bishops and, and whatever, patterning his SS after the Jesuit order, um, which is ironic because the Jesuits were founded by a mingled Jew, Ignatius de Loyola. Um, more on that here in a little bit as I continue. But uh, this issue of Kristallnacht, what does that mean? Well, that's what started the Holocaust, essentially. The Nazi propaganda came out and they started to tell people about what the Jews were involved in. And again, not all the Jews were corrupt, but there were some that definitely were. And the Nazis used that to great advantage. And a lot of the Jews were also into socialism slash communism. And the, and the Nazis used that as well as propaganda against the Jewish people. And this propaganda came out and made German people mad. The German people, some of them, not all of them, again, understand you can't just all Germans are bad, all Jews are bad. That doesn't work. But uh, some of the German people came out and they broke uh, Jewish store owners' windows and things, um, financiers, whatever else. They attacked their offices and things, and it was called the Night of Broken Glass, Crystal Knocked. So a mass movement of violence against the Jewish people that changed the minds of the people against the Jews. Um, are we seeing any of that today? Yes. And ironically, just as in Nazi Germany, there were actually um, papal Juden, we call them, uh, Jews that served the Pope, Catholic. Uh, they convert to Catholicism or they just are working with uh, the Catholics, like the Jesuits have done. And like I said, the Jesuit order was founded by a mingled Jew. I think his father was a converso or something that he converted over to um, Roman Catholicism, but he was part Spanish, part Jew. And again, I showed the proof from it from a Jesuit book. So uh, in one of my other videos about, I was wrong about Ignatius de Loyola. But um, the interesting thing is today we have uh, George Soros and he's find, he's funding both sides of the this whole thing in Gaza right now. So there are students coming out and they are protesting what Israel's doing in Gaza and yet they're being funded by a, you know, Jew, George Soros. And, you know, the, the very difficult thing here as a Christian is not to get drawn into either side. Okay, you cannot go, the Jews don't do anything wrong because they do. That's the reason for the time of Jacob's trouble coming in the future. Um, but you can't say uh, that the Jews are completely wrong too, because they're not. You can't just, you know, brushstroke all Jews are evil, all Jews are bad. They all are the synagogue of Satan. They're not real. The Holocaust didn't happen. You, know, you can't get into that side either. As a Christian, you have to understand this thing, and it's very challenging and very tricky. And taking a stand is going to get you in, a trouble with, in trouble with both sides. You know, you have to be right in the middle as a Christian and say, I'm not anti-Semitic, but I don't just cover up for their problems and their sins either. I'm going to, to speak the truth in a loving way, but in a, you know, enough that you can rebuke them also and say, you know, you're in sin for rejecting Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. He's not a Trinity, okay? It's the Godhead, the doctrine of the Godhead. Um, it's my dog running by if you didn't realize that. But what will be the trigger event that leads to the second Holocaust? Well, I think part of it could be this thing of right now, as I said in my last video, the Jews are trying to, or they're trying to uh, pass this ruling right now that you can't read certain parts of the New Testament or any other thing that's anti-Semitic 
which is kind of weird because Christianity is a Shemitic, you know, religion. Jesus is a Jew. The disciples were Jews. The apostles, you know, they are all Jews. Um, but whatever. But they're trying to pass this thing. Well, what's that going to do? It's going to cause a mass uh, anger against the Jewish people. And you have the whole thing going on in Gaza, which, again, very tricky here because I'm for the Jews getting their land. The Jews should have a right to the land of Israel. Um, Galatians chapter 4 even talks about it, about cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. The bondwoman would be um, Hagar, and how that her children is Ishmael, her son is Ishmael and his descendants. And those people there would be the true Palestinian type bloodline would go back to Ishmael, I believe. And that they're in that land and they're supposed to be cast out. And the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, um, they are the ones that have a right to that land. And But they didn't come back the right way. Okay, They came back the way the Bible says would happen, that they come back in unbelief. If, uh, Ezekiel chapter 36 talks about that. Again, I've spoken about this in multiple studies. I'm not going to get into a big comment battle, so don't try to get that started with me. I'm a YouTube content creator. I make videos, in other words. I don't get into big comment battles. And so if you want to go into the comment thing and post some big, huge comment, and I don't respond to it correctly, and you want to declare victory, that I'm afraid of you, whatever. Uh, that's up to you. But... I believe that we're going to see um, things changing. And if they pass this whole thing of you can't have the New Testament, there's going to be huge backlash against it. And, you know, you can't quote certain things. You can't be anti-Semitic and all this, and we're going to make laws. You can't make laws to control people's speech. Come on. You start to censor free speech, you're, you're going against people's unalienable rights from God. You can't do that. But if they do... Um, then it's going to create a lot of problems. A lot of problems for the Jewish people. And so, that's what I see coming. That there's going to be some kind of an event, a crystal knocked, possibly this year. And, um, you know, another thing here too, which I was want to say, I found out about recently, this, what, 85, 95 billion dollar thing that they passed over the weekend a week or two ago um, send more money to Ukraine which you have a little papal Juden over there uh, what's his name the guy from Ukraine can't think of his name right now it just slipped my mind um, but uh, this little professing Jew over there president of Ukraine I'll put it in the comments section I know you know it I do too but I just can't think of it right now but this guy, he's over there, and um, and he's constantly, you know, we want more money. You know, they've lost 600,000 troops now. Massive loss for Ukraine. They'll never rebuild after this. You know, get their society back. You can't lose 600,000 young men and expect to have a healthy future. That's bad. That's going to take many generations to come back from that. And they're not done yet. But... Um, <clears throat> Uh, lost all kinds of people over there. Oh, we need more money. Let's keep the war going. You know, can't admit to loss to Russia. You know, Russia didn't win. No, no, they can't. Can't let them win. Stupid. Very stupid. But, you know, our money goes there as taxpayers. And I just learned that uh, they found oil, uh, yeah, oil and natural gas over in Gaza. Well, you know, our military is interested in that then. And the uh, whole system is interested in that. And so now, you know, we need to go liberate that oil and natural gas. And they're building this port over there, this big port, $320 million port, paid for by the American taxpayers. You're welcome. <laughs> and uh, they're going to send 1,000 troops, U.S. troops over there to guard this thing and whatever. Uh, doing the work for the... Uh, modern wicked nation of Israel and I say again understand why what I'm saying here oh then you hate the Jewish people no I don't hate the Jewish people it's a great vexation to me to have to even 
speak about these things and uh, all this corruption and everything else. I try to defend the nation of Israel. I always have, and the Jewish people. Um, I'm not their enemy. But uh, that's what's going on. And so you have people that are finding out about this, the American taxpayers that are finding out about this, and people are getting mad. And of course you have all the stuff that's going on, you know, in, in uh, Gaza right now, and all these people, you know, free Palestine and all this other stuff. And, you know, they're upset, and look what the Jews are doing, and whatever. Well, you know, they're, they're coming into the land, and they're, they're saying, cast out the bondwoman and her son. That's scripture being fulfilled. But they're not saved people. They're not. They're doing it in a wicked way and whatever. That's what the Bible said would happen. Okay, it's just the way it is. You can get upset about it, but uh, you can't be a Bible-believing Christian and against this whole thing of what's going on over there. It's Scripture being fulfilled. It has to be this way. You kick people out of the land, it's not going to be a fun, friendly, hey, you know, we'd like to kick you out of your home here. Um, it just isn't. The, you know, Ishmaelites, the descendants of Ishmael, have no right to that land. They have no scriptural claim to that land. Just the way it is. Uh, I will stand with their right to do it over there, to kick, get them out of that land. Now, they could probably do it a better way, so that they're not just killing innocent people. But, um, you know, I've seen video, too, where the Palestinians are fighting back. Um, guerrilla warfare tactics against the Israeli army. So don't give me this thing of they're just innocent civilians and whatever else. They're civilians that are attacking the Israeli army. So, but of course, what's it all about? Well, as with any war, it's about making the military industrial complex richer. That's what's going on. And um, Zelensky, that's his name, just finally came back to me. The president of Ukraine. Um, the mingled Jew that he is, uh, Zelensky. So it took me a while, but I got it. But this whole thing um, is leading up to what the Bible said would happen. And again, you know, I've seen this thing so many times in the comments. Oh, the, the Illuminati is following the Bible. You know, that's their blueprint for the end times. And, and you know, that proves that the Bible's in a cult book or something because... The Illuminati follows it to a T and whatever. Uh, no, that proves that the Bible is pre-recorded history. Um, they have no choice but to follow it. It's just the way that it is. Um, you have to understand that our God is so powerful, the God of the Bible is so powerful, that he says, okay, I'm going to write down what's going to happen in the future, and then I'm going to force people to follow that. The prophetic events. God doesn't force you to get saved. He gives you free will in life. But uh, God will force certain events to happen. Because he has the whole history planned out. How he's going to come back again the second time. How he's going to rule and reign for 1,000 years on this earth. He's got it all planned. And um, so, <laughs> uh, what's the Kristallnacht event? When will it happen? Well, you could say it's already kind of happening in some ways. Sorry, I'm a little bit out of breath. It's, you can't see how steep the hill is. But um, but uh, what will be the event? I don't know. Um, you know, it's not that uh, when Trump comes to power, then that's when the alt-right fascist system will come in because Trump is anti-Semitic. Trump is not anti-Semitic. He's very much... Uh, for Judaism, I've heard that uh, he is raising his children to be Jewish and whatever else. Um, no idea uh, if that's true or not or whatever else. But the whole thing is um, Donald Trump is an actor. And he will do what his uh, Jesuit bosses that trained him at Fordham University. He'll do whatever they say. And so, oh, Donald Trump's going to bring in a, a great revised America or whatever else. No, he won't. Um, would he be better than Biden? Well, uh, that's kind of how they work this whole system, this political 
divide and conquer system. You have good cop, bad cop, that whole way of messing with people's minds. Joe Biden is the bad cop. He's done more to destroy this nation than any president in history. The guy's the worst president, in my opinion, ever. But uh, Trump will come in and he'll say the right things because, like I said, he's an actor. But, I mean, the guy's a liberal city boy, which I've said many times. Um, so, oh, he's conservative. He's a man of the people and all the other stuff. Yeah, like Hitler. Hitler was the same kind of a thing, you know, hugging people, putting his arms around people, holding little children and, and whatever else. It's propaganda, people. You haven't woken up to that yet. But Trump, when he comes in, um, could he bring in the alt-right system because his Jesuit masters tell him to do that? Certainly. Uh, and then we'll see what happens. Again, don't think because he's in the back pocket of, you know, lining up with Israel and whatever else, don't think that, uh, oh, he'll never... He'll never go against the Jewish people. That's not true. Just like uh, there were Jews in the hierarchy of Nazi Germany. And you can, I mean, you can look that up. There were, there were Nazi officers that were of, had some Jewish blood in them. And um, like I said, the thing of George Soros, funding both sides right now, the pro-Palestinian side, the pro-Israel side. He finances both sides as a, as a, Jew, Jew. <laughs> um, so again, you know, just to explain something, we didn't, you know, come up with this term papal Juden. Juden is just the German word plural for Jews. We didn't come up with the word papal Juden because we hate the Jewish people. We're trying to distinguish between kindredly pure Jews that the Bible says would be there in the end times and those who serve the Pope those who have mingled their seed with the Gentile nations and things, and then they do it as a, as a way for political advantage. Um, we're trying to distinguish between the two here, and we don't want to be offensive to the actual true Jews out there. That's why we say people Juden. It's not, a, it's not made for hatred for anybody that's called Jewish. That's not it at all. So... I'd like to know your thoughts on this whole thing. Um, again, understand that this thing of Jews being kicked out of the out of a country, it happens for two different reasons. Number one, because of their actual sin that they get involved in. Uh, Martin Luther wrote about it in the Jews and Their Lies book. And the sin is that they believe that they have a right to charge usury. And because back in the Old Testament, there's a verse that talks about that they can charge usury to the stranger in the land. They're not supposed to charge usury, lending out money with lots of interest coming in. I mean, we don't see that in America, do we? Yeah, right. Um, but they are not supposed to use usury against another Jew, the children of Israel. But they can use it against the strangers in the land. So um, a lot of these Jews out there down through the centuries, they, uh, again, this is admitted fact. You can look at their own sources. They will admit this. They get into being peddlers. They walk around with a backpack full of stuff that they will sell to people. They buy the stuff cheap and sell it for a profit. Then they move into stores. They can have a storefront where they become a merchant. They're getting more, they have more money now, so they're able to buy more cheap stuff you know, kind of like Walmart, which is ironically owned by Papal Juden, but, uh, and they buy a bunch of cheap stuff, cheaply made, and then they sell it for a profit. And then with that money, then they can start to lend out, and they lend with the concept of usury. And the reason that they do that is because they take that passage from the Old Testament and they say, see, we can charge usury, the Bible says so. Well, problem is, it's in the land. It's supposed to be in the land of Israel, not in the lands where you're scattered. And so what happened is uh, the nation of Israel had come back. They rebuilt their temple. Read about that in the book of Nehemiah, the rebuilding of the temple after the Babylonian captivity. And I think it was during the Media Persian era 
that they were back there and they uh, got the permission from the king and everything else to rebuild the temple. And they're, so they're there, the temple's there when Jesus Christ is born on the earth and Jesus Christ comes as their king, as their Messiah, offers himself to them, they reject him and uh, crucified him in collusion with Rome. And that's when the fifth kingdom started, the mixture of iron, Rome, and miry clay, Israel. Miry clay is a reference to Israel. You can watch my study on it, showing the proof, or you can do your own word study, miry clay in the King James Bible, and you'll see it comes up with Israel, and only Israel, not the Gentiles. So the fifth kingdom is Roman and Jewish together, papal, Juden. That's how it works. And because of their rejection, rejection of Jesus Christ, they're given another chance, rejection and crucifixion, they're given another chance in the book of Acts to come back, to repent for what they've done. That's why repentance is preached in Acts chapter 2. Uh, Jews preaching to other Jews. And, you know, a lot of the Jews do get saved on the day of Pentecost there. And uh, a lot of the early Christians were Jews. But then they start to take the gospel to the Gentiles because nationally the Jews rejected Jesus Christ. And so then, after that happened, God cast them out of the land of Israel, and they are scattered among all the different nations out there. And God did that, I believe, as a test to see if they would remain true to their language, to their people, to their beliefs. And some did. I do believe that. I do believe that there are Jews that did stay true and did not intermarry and things. Um, even Rabbi Mordecai Kraft which I played a little bit of his one video, and he admits to all of this stuff. Again, they don't cover this up. This is not anti-Semitic. They admit all the stuff I've said to you so far. I mean, they don't get into the thing of rejecting Jesus because, well, they do, but I'm saying they don't say it that he was God. They don't believe he was God. But Rabbi Mordecai Kraft talked about how that the Jews that came to Germany, that they were intermarrying with the Catholic German people, some of those that were Catholic. Uh, again, not all Germans are Catholic. But um, he even admitted it. He said 50% of the Jews had intermingled with the German Catholics. That's why they came up with the term Ashkenazi Jew. Because Ashkenaz was the son of Japheth that basically settled in Germany. So I'm probably, you would say, of um, Ashkenaz heritage because my a lot of my ancestors go back to Germany. And I don't have any Jewish blood in me. Again, I've Prove that uh, my sister got a DNA test no Jewish blood so you can say oh you look Jewish or whatever well actually that's not correct um, because um, the Ashkenazi Jews um, look like Ashkenaz uh, look German so my facial features and the way I act and whatever else is because um, I'm truly of uh, German type stock and the Jews that are married resemble me not the other way around so, but then they were scattered because they rejected Jesus as their Messiah. They're scattered, like I said, and um, intermarried with some of the other people and things. And what will happen here in the end times is God's going to start to bring them back. And when God brings them back to their land, which is happening right now, um, he's going to do that through force. And right now, the nation that has the most... Jews in it is America. Um, I think we're pretty much, I heard a statistic a few years ago or something, I think maybe a year or two ago, something like that, that the, I'm gonna grouse right there. Um, trying to stay focused on the video here. Not easy when my dog's rolling and things and, you know, grouse flying and whatever. Sorry about that. Uh, to walk and talk, what can you say? Not a deep theological study. I've done those, I have plenty of those out there. But, um, <clears throat> so it's not that I can't do that, is to put that out there, because I get people attacking me on that. Oh, why don't you just get to the point, you know, whatever. Okay, I have in other videos. But, um, back to the subject here at hand. The nation of Israel, um, 
oh, I, I know what it was, the study that uh, they said that there are as many people, as many Jews in America as there was in Germany before the Holocaust. And I thought that was an interesting study, that they're literally comparing the number of Jews in America to the number of Jews that were there in Germany before the Holocaust happened. Hmm. That's kind of an interesting thing. So, will it happen? Yes, it will. Because like I said earlier, to finish my point, um, point number one, people will realize the corruption of the Jews. It's there, it's real. They even admit to it themselves, the Jewish people. They'll realize that. And they'll start to say, get them out of this country. We don't want them here. Secondly, and more importantly, is the spiritual aspect to it. See, if you're a Jew, you can say, well, we can fight off the thing. We'll put out propaganda. We'll do whatever so we can stay here in America. We're not going anywhere. Uh, you can do that. But you can't get by number two. Number two is God is going to bring you back to your land. And if you have to go back kicking and screaming, he'll do that. God will bring the Jews back to their land. And that's what we're going to see. That's why this thing is happening. That's why um, once it gets started... The crystal knocked, so to speak, whatever that event will be, it's going to push the Jews back to their land. And um, again, you know, how do we react to all of this as a Christian? As I said in the last video, you know, uh, because the Jews, their sins have to be judged, their sins have to be condemned. They aren't just innocent. Um, and so you have to say some things about that. But you don't want to say it in such a way that it would bring hatred of people upon the Jews as a result. And you don't want to start to develop hatred in your heart for them. Remember, God still has promises and things about those Jewish people. Luther! Come on, boy. Come on. Good boy. He's going over to the neighbor's property going across the road, which we don't like. So, um, stand true to the Word of God, brethren. The Word of God teaches that the Jews are cast out of their land because they rejected Jesus as their Messiah, as God manifest in the flesh. They were kicked out of the land. They're scattered among all the different nations. That's why you find Jews in pretty much every nation. Um, they're going to be brought back in unbelief according to Ezekiel chapter 36. Um, when they get there, God's going to perform signs and wonders and miracles for them for seven years, and it's the time of Jacob's trouble. And that time is going to be there as a way to introduce Jesus Christ to the world, and specifically to the Jewish people. That's what the New Testament teaches. Um, if you're a Bible-believing Christian, you have to believe that, because that's what the scriptures say. Okay, so that will be it. And uh, I have to work my way back up to the our little cabin thing or tiny house. And I have to get down to the office so I can get this rant video <laughs> uploaded. Um, I do have some big studies that I'm going to be coming out with. I have this massive blockage right here, right now on the trail uh, a lot of work to do there i've shared that in other studies but rather walk and talks rather so but i guess i'll quit now so hopefully you enjoyed the little walk sorry i was a little bit scatterbrained through it but i can just i can see these things coming and i think i have to say something about this i have to do something if you're a Jew out there and you've watched this thing to the end or you've skipped forward to the end, um, I know that uh, you require a sign. You want to see some proof of this stuff being legitimate because you're afraid to just join Christianity and all the stuff that it would involve. I get it. But uh, please spend your time looking into this because the time is going to come. And if you're Jewish, like I said, uh, another thing, you really want to get back to Israel. Um, because the time of persecution is coming and it's going to be orchestrated by the Lord because he's going to say, okay, time for you to go back to your land. 
And if it's too comfortable here in America, then I'm gonna make it uncomfortable so you go back. So that will be it. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.